uh, without their knowledge and without their permission, 24-7. So we're headed for a giant unknown period, uh, which could be disastrous. Um, and there's been little or no study. We're just going headlong into this abyss. It's very frightening. I find it absolutely atrocious because, like you said, this is going... Now, there is a lot of groups, for those of you who are local, I know we have listeners all over the country and, in fact, the world, but for those of you who are listening in right here in the um, WHPC area, we have groups that are trying to fight putting up these repeaters, which are going to be at your house, not down the block on that big, horrible tower. That'll be there, too. But as Dr. Emil just shared, these things are going to be much more prolific. Well, we're going to take a little break right here on Herbally Yours. And I'd like to remind you, you are listening to Herbally Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Listen live online at nccradio.org or on iHeartRadio. For more information on today's guest or topic, email us at whpc at ncc.edu. Stay tuned. Herbally Yours will be right back. Okay, so maybe you didn't finish or broke your New Year's resolution to get to the gym or start that project you had kept on the back burner since, well, okay, the dawn of time. I get it. That's okay. But you know... There's one thing you can do to get back that inspiration, that can-do spirit. Perhaps you or someone you know has a vehicle that they don't drive anymore. Why not consider donating it to the National Federation of the Blind? All you have to do is call 866-282-7327. That's 866-282-7327. You can also log online to nfb.org and click donate. And maybe you know someone that's blind. You can reach out to nfb at nfb.org. That's nfb at nfb.org. So what do you have to lose? You have everything to gain by helping someone in need, like your motivation. Oh, and a tax deduction. So why not get started today? And remember, charity is only a phone call away. And welcome back once again to Herbally Yours, right here at Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC, and today we are talking to Dr. Emil Tafel, and he has a lot of information about electromagnetic field safety, and we're going to talk about the problem we did already, and it's exacerbating with the advent of 5G. What I was saying as we went off is there are groups you can join that are fighting against putting 5G up every single place, including right outside your house, including right outside your baby's crib. Now, Dr. Emil, is there any um, concern that things are worse for little people, as in babies and children, than for some adults in terms of the sensitivity to these exposures? Yeah, that's a great question. There are two big concerns there. One, of course, is that children being born now or being born within the last 15 years, 20 years even, are exposed to this type of radiation from conception uh, and actually before, actually. Their parents are exposed to it, and so the, uh, the, 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 um, the genetic material is exposed to this radiation long before the baby's conceived and born. This is not true of older generations who grew up, who were born and grew up in an almost radiation-less environment and maybe were exposed to it as adults. So their length of exposure is extended. In addition, the time of life when they're exposed uh, as, a, as a fetus, as a baby, as an infant, um, are times when there's rapid cell growth. Uh, the, the body is more sensitive to toxins in general. And so the the youngster is much more vulnerable to exposure to electromagnetic fields. Uh, so on, on those two counts, it's a very critical time in a child's life to be protected from as much environmental hazard as, as you can, and electromagnetic fields is certainly one of those. Well, you know, in other countries, for instance, in China, a girlfriend of mine is, lives there, and she comes back and forth. She actually brought a newspaper with her, 
and she showed me that there are special clothes that are actually required by the Chinese government for women to wear if they work in a situation where there's a computer in front of them, which almost everyone does, while they're pregnant. And these clothes are made from special materials that have metal in them. So how does that work to help deflect the, the effects? I know you have many of these available and people can find them on your EMF site if you li visit the link um, after, that'll be posted after our show. So what is that about? Yes, those clothes are available in the United States, um, but they're not required by our government. Those clothes use uh, fabrics that have metal fibers in them, whether stainless steel or silver or other metals, which will act to reflect radio frequency signals, so Wi-Fi signals, cell phone signals, uh, away from the wearer's body. So a woman can use that to protect her reproductive area, to protect the baby, um, or she can use it as a hat or pants or gloves or protect any part of the body that you like, uh, and men can as well. It's important to recognize that these clothes, these fabrics, are shielding only for the radio waves. They're not shielding for the magnetic fields that are coming out of the computer or out of the wiring or the battery backup or the printer or any of the other electronics that are in that vicinity. So <clears throat> it's, it, it, it becomes a little bit technical, but it's important to understand that there are more than one type of EMF and to shield yourself is a good thing, but understand what it is that you are shielding and what you're not with any given uh, shield, because you don't want to set up a situation where you get, you, you get the idea that I'm shielded, therefore I'm immune, therefore I can work in front of my computer with impunity because I'm, I'm protected. Yes, you might be protected from radio frequency, but if you're not protected from magnetic, you can actually increase your exposure by by just thinking you're protected and, and sitting there for longer. Well, that's interesting. I didn't even think of that. And I do want our listeners to know you are listening to Herbally Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse at naturalnurse.com. And my guest today is Dr. Emil de Tafel, And we're talking about EMF safety. And Dr. Emil, let's, I know we, we're getting to the end of our hour, but um, what about the smart meters that I know are very proliferative in our listening area? They are. They're, you know, rolling out with a goal of 100% coverage of every home and business, every building that uses electricity. They'd like to have a smart meter on there because it enables the utility to collect data, billing information in particular, but other data as well about the electricity use, how much you're using at what hours, and even the plan is to go further down the road and what appliances you're using at any given time. The, there's plans in place for the utility during times of peak demand or emergency to be able to shut off what's considered non-essential appliances. So they may shut off your dishwasher or your air conditioner. Uh, if there's an emergency or an air, a time of peak demand so that that electricity then can be channeled to other more critical uh, uses, hospitals, for example, or nuclear power plants or wherever else the utility deems that it's needed. So that's, that's the stated reason for the smart meters. The problem with the smart meters is there are several fold. One is that this signal now containing data about your electricity usage is being broadcast out into your neighborhood. Someone with the wherewithal could capture that data. They could know when you're home, when you're using electricity, when you're not, what you're using it for, and so on. So, so there's a privacy issue associated with smart meters. Number two, smart meters have caught fire. There's, they are a fire hazard in and of themselves. I'm not quite sure why they are a fire hazard, but there's been several multiple reports in the press about smart meters catching fire. And third, and perhaps most important, is that a smart meter produces uh, at least four kinds of EMF exposure into your home. There's the electric and magnetic fields that come from the electricity flowing through it. That that's, you can't avoid. But in addition to that, 
A smart meter produces this radio signal, which pulses with a very strong pulse every few seconds or every few minutes, depending on which type you have. And that radio pulse doesn't go just straight out to the utility. It comes out in all directions. So it's bathing your home and your neighbor's home with this microwave radiation pulsing with, a, with great intensity every few seconds, 24-7. As well, it's producing a dirty electricity. There's a, a transformer in the smart meter which injects dirty electricity into the wiring, which then travels through the wiring of your home and then radiates dirty electricity, which is a high-frequency erratic signal coming out of your wiring, and again, bathing you in that 24-7, again, without your knowledge and without your permission. So a smart meter is a... is not a good thing for a whole lot of reasons. And there are a number of groups around the country that have banded together to try to resist. Individuals have. They've put locks on their old analog meters or signs on them telling the utility, you don't have permission to come on my property and to change my meter. Um, I, I know, I've heard stories of the utility workers bringing police with them, uh, bringing the sheriff with them to go and change out your meter because like it or not, the utility meter on your house is not your property. It's the property of the, of the utility. And so they can have access to it. They have uh, an easement on your property so they can have access to it. And they can change it and put what they want there. Now, uh, one, one recourse that I know right. several people have taken is that they do fight against it. And, and both here and in Florida, both of my homes, people have sometimes been able to make a choice where they can pay to have the smart meter taken back off, replaced with the old analog meter, and they have to pay every single month forever for that privilege. Yeah, that's correct. Um, you know, in a way it makes sense because now the utility has to pay a worker to come to your house and read the meter every month. So, you know, there is there is some cost to the utility of having to do that. Um, but, yeah, in places where that's an option, that's not a bad idea because then you, uh, as long as... The, and it's at the utility's discretion, right? They can decide if they want to do that or not. Um, but if you can... That's, that's a great idea. That option is going to run out, though, because analog meters uh, are not going to be available much longer, right? So, uh, you know, manufacturers are just making smart meters now. They're not making analog meters anymore. And so at some point, the, the available stock of analog meters is going to run out. That's the same as with the phones. The like, I still have a copper-wired phone. You're not going to be able to get them anymore either. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The, the lines will not be maintained, and uh, you won't be able to use a landline at some point. Well, at least you've worked all your life, and we're coming to the end, Dr. Emil, but you've worked all your life at putting together the best variety of ways that people can, uh, if not fight back, at least protect themselves and their loved ones so they're not being as inundated with these this dirty electricity and various other soupfuls of electromagnetic fields and the coming threat of 5G, which is horrendous. Again, band together with others in your neighborhood if you want to try to stop it. Of course, there are governmental laws that make it difficult to stop it. So in a closing um, statement, Dr. Emil, what would you suggest people do to find out more and to protect themselves? Well, you've done the first thing already, and that is to increase your awareness of this issue. Step number two, then, is get a meter and diagnose your environment. Maybe you don't have a problem. That would be great. Maybe you do. If necessary, band together with neighbors, and you can pool and share the meter. But check out your home, check out your workplace, check out your child's school, check out your car. You're going to find issues. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to Herbally Yours, produced in the studios of 90.3 WHPC, Nassau Community College, Garden City, New York. You can email us at whpc at ncc.edu. This is your host, Ellen Kamai at naturalnurse.com, inviting you to join us next week for another edition of Herbally Yours. Until then, stay healthy.